Welcome to the Palace Theater's Broadway Buzz. My name is Stuart Brown, founder of the 24-7 online Broadway radio station, SoundsOfBroadway.com, where you hear the best from Off-Broadway, Broadway, and the London stage. If you want non-stop Broadway music, tune into SoundsOfBroadway.com. I'll be your host for this podcast series. For this edition of the Broadway Buzz, I'll be talking about the Alan J. Lerner Frederick Lowe classic My Fair Lady, which will be playing at the Palace Theater on Tuesday, January 24th, Wednesday, January 25th, and Thursday, January 26th. Curtain time is 7.30 p.m. each night. For ticket information, go to the Palace's website, and that is palacetheaterct.org. The production of My Fair Lady coming to the Palace Theater is based on the 2018 Lincoln Center Revival, and that was in New York City. It opened on April 19, 2018, had a pretty good run, 509 performances. Let's go back to the original My Fair Lady, and that is based on George Bernard Shaw's play Pygmalion. My Fair Lady took Broadway by storm, opening on March 15, 1956, running for 2,717 performances. It is the 20th longest-running show in Broadway history, the longest-running musical in Broadway history. It has a score by Alan J. Lerner and Frederick Lowe. Their previous works included Rigadoon and Paint Your Wagon. It starred Rex Harrison as Professor Harold Higgins, Julie Andrews as Eliza Doolittle, Stanley Holloway as Alfred Doolittle, and Robert Cote as Colonel Pickering. The London production, which starred the same four principal players, opened on April 30th, 1958, also had a very long run, 2,000 over 2,200 performances. The original production was nominated for 11 Tony Awards, winning Best Musical, Best Actor in a Musical for Rex Harrison, and a number of scenic and costume awards. Julie Andrews did not win, losing to Judy Holliday for Bells Are Ringing. Either Stanley Holloway or Robert Cote won for Best Featured Actor in a Musical, losing out to Sidney Chaplin, also from Bells Are Ringing. There have been a number of Broadway revivals in 1978, 81, 93, and 2018. All have had few nominations or awards. When the original show was in development, there were various titles that were suggested for the musical. Dominic McHugh, a musicology professor at Sheffield University in England, wrote, During the autumn of 1955, the show was typically referred to as My Lady Liza, and most of the contracts refer to this title. Alan J. Lerner preferred My Fair Lady, relating both to one of Shaw's provisional titles for Pygmalion and to the final line of every verse of the nursery rhyme, London Bridge is Falling Down. Recalling that the Gershwin's 1925 musical Tell Me More had been titled My Fair Lady in its out-of-town tryout, and also had a musical number under that title, Alan J. Lerner made a courtesy call to Ira Gershwin, letting him know the use of the title for the Alan J. Lerner Frederick Lowe classic, My Fair Lady. Noel Coward was the first person offered the role of Henry Higgins, but he turned it down, and he suggested his friend Rex Harrison. After much deliberation, Harrison agreed to accept the part. Mary Martin was an early choice for the role of Eliza Doolittle, but she also declined. Young actress Julie Andrews was discovered and cast as Eliza after the show's creative team went to see her Broadway debut in the musical The Boyfriend. The original cast recording was released on April 2, 1956, and was the best-selling album in the United States in 1956. The album became a massive seller, topping the charts on the U.S. Billboard Top 200 for 15 weeks at different times in 1956, eight consecutive weeks, also in 57, 58, and 1959. It was the first LP to sell one million copies. According to Jeffrey Block, opening night critics immediately recognized that My Fair Lady fully measured up to the Rodgers and Hammerstein model of an integrated musical. One critic is quoted as saying, Don't bother reading this review now. You'd better sit down and send for those tickets. A couple of other snippets from reviews. You had Walter Kerr in the New York Herald Tribune write, My Fair Lady is wise, witty, and winning. In short, a miraculous musical. Brooks Atkinson in the New York Times said, one of the best musicals of the century. Many of us know the 1964 film adaptation with Harrison returning as Professor Henry Higgins. 
Audrey Hepburn was cast as Eliza, which created controversy among theatergoers, both because Andrews was regarded as perfect in the part and Hepburn's singing voice was dubbed by Marnie Nixon. Jack Warner, head of Warner Brothers Studios, wanted a star with a great deal of name recognition. But since Andrews did not have any film experience, he deemed success more likely with a movie star. Julie Andrews went on to star in Mary Poppins that same year, for which she won the Academy Award for Best Actress. Audrey Hepburn was not even nominated for her role as Eliza Doolittle. Here's a great story about the out-of-town tryout by Frank Rizzo. Frank Rizzo used to be the head theater critic at the Hartford Current. He writes for Variety and a number of other publications. He said that, so opening night was at the Schubert Theater in New Haven, Connecticut on February 4th, 1956, but it almost did not happen. Rex Harrison, a novice to the Broadway musical, was feeling insecure. The show's director, Moss Hart, its librettist and lyricist Alan J. Lerner and Frederick Lowe, tried to reassure the temperamental actor, but at the final rehearsal before the first public performance, he became overwhelmed, stopped the rehearsal, and said, we're not going to open tonight, and I may never go on. He then stormed off the stage, went into his dressing room, slammed the door. Well, Maurice Bailey, who ran the Schubert organization at the time, was called in and told Harrison that if he didn't perform that night, he would go on stage and tell the audience of the actor's refusal. It's not clear whether Mr. Bailey's warning or the failure to perform lawsuits that were being discussed with Harrison's lawyer and agent, but that had an impact and the actor relented and performed. This concludes this episode of the Broadway Buzz presented by Webster Bank. Remember, My Fair Lady will be playing at the Palace Theater on Tuesday, January 24th, Wednesday, January 25th, and Thursday, January 26th. Curtain time is 7.30 p.m. each night. For ticket information, go to the Palace website at palacetheaterct.org. You've been listening to the Palace Theater's Broadway Buzz, presented by Webster Bank. My name is Stuart Brown, founder of the 24-7 online Broadway radio station, soundsofbroadway.com. If you are looking for non-stop Broadway music, tune into soundsofbroadway.com, playing the best from off-Broadway, Broadway, and the London stage. Thank you for listening. I hope you will join me again in our next podcast episode. Until then, stay safe, be well, and be informed with the Broadway Buzz.